Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. DJ Peter Vass posting this, 313 million XRP have moved by a crypto whale in a single transaction. So this wasn't even multiple transactions. This was one honking 313 million XRP moved. Uh, that was worth about 148.1 million US dollars on October the 29th in a single transaction. So this was reported by Whale Alert, a tracker for large transactions in cryptocurrency. And guys, if you notice, we are seeing more and more of these types of large transactions. You compare that and um, I guess couple that, maybe not compare that, but couple that with the fact that uh, over the last, how many months is it now? I think three months, we have seen the most wallets become active. I guess I should say XRP wallets specifically, uh, holding uh, amounts that were above 1 million XRP. And so the insinuation is, I guess some of them could have been, I mean, there, there were ones that were over 10 million XRP and those ones were even excluded. Uh, we were assuming that those ones had to do with ODL, but the ones from 1 million to 10 million, we're assuming that those are whales holding large quantities of XRP, and that number has actually increased. Now, when we can track this XRP uh, from an exchange, and we know, uh, for example, it's an ODL exchange, then, I mean, chances are it's likely an ODL transfer, but some of these are two unknown wallets that just cannot be tracked. Uh, they also mentioned down here on October the 29th, a total of 40 uh, million, 40.6 million XRP worth about $19.2 million was transferred from the crypto exchange Bitstamp to an unknown wallet. So this is just another transfer. Another 30 million XRP worth about 14.2 million was transferred from an unknown wallet to Bitstamp. So we're seeing all kinds of transfers like this and uh, they have been ramping up as of late. Coincidentally, when the market has been fairly low, this is XRP on the hourly. And, uh, you know, despite the fact that we're thinking whales might be moving and, you know, we are likely going to see when XRP hits a new all time high, we are likely going to see the same kind of activity there. I think they're moving to accumulate, moving to buy. And uh, at a later date, we're going to see the exact opposite. We're going to see similar moves, I think. But at that point, that XRP will be moved to uh, the exchanges to sell. That is just my opinion on that. Anyway, interesting moves. We're also seeing this guy's from XRP Crypto Wolf. He's uh, he posted this. XRP has outperformed both Bitcoin and Ethereum on a year to date basis. Someone was coming at David Schwartz on Twitter and here's how he responded. Okay, he's defended XRP's price performance in a recent tweet after a disgruntled investor called the cryptocurrency's price a disgrace. David Schwartz explained that the Ripple affiliated token is actually performing in line with other major cryptocurrencies. Um, so he had to kind of put this guy in his place here. The Ripple executive has noted that one's perception of XRP's price performance depends on a specific time frame, And that is also something that uh, I know some of us veteran investors aren't too concerned about anymore. But, uh, you know, if you're new to the space and you're thinking to yourself, yeah, but when? When moon? That's the big question, right? When moon? This is what we all want to know. And that is the most difficult thing to predict, unfortunately. We can always, you know, use tools like Fibonacci's to see how high the price could get at a certain point, but um, you know, this idea of when, could it be a flip the switch moment? Yeah, it could. Could we see something dramatic happen to the downside? Uh, yeah, we could as well. And we have in the past when uh, the SEC brought forth the lawsuit against Ripple. All of a sudden we just see the price collapse and crater down here. Remember guys, other cryptocurrencies weren't uh, collapsing and actually uh, XRP had an effect on the rest of the crypto market and other cryptos did go down a little bit at this point in time, but XRP, obviously the worst performer, went down 74% during a bull run. So again, a black swan event, anything can happen. And so David Schwartz explaining this, the Ripple executive has noted that one's perception of XRP price depends on, right, the time frame. Schwartz has pointed to the fact that XRP has outperformed both Bitcoin and Ethereum on a year-to-date basis. Uh, for instance, Ethereum is down, but XRP is down 45% only. Uh, however, it should be noted that XRP is still down a staggering 86%, 86.4% from its all-time high that was reached all the way back in January of 2018. Uh, it is one of the few major cryptocurrencies that failed to reach new peaks during the latest bull market cycle. Yet, despite facing plenty of legal uncertainty due to the SEC's uh, lawsuit against Ripple, XRP has managed to remain among the leading cryptocurrencies. Let's not forget, it's still in the top 10 despite the lawsuit. That to me is a testament to how robust the cryptocurrency really is, how much people still believe in it, how much money is still being poured into it, and so why I'm still holding XRP and why I'm thinking we are still going to see enormous price moves once that real world utility kicks in. Remember guys, there are two parts to crypto. 
And I've said this from the beginning, there's spec and there is real world utility. And this is why I'm not selling all my cryptocurrency. This is why I'm keeping a portion of my coins that I know have true value, that I know are going to change the face of finance, for example, that I don't mind holding. And I mean, everybody's going to have a different number in mind. On my channel in the past, I've showed you guys this uh, cash out plan, this spreadsheet that I created. You basically put in the cryptocurrencies you have, you put in the quantity you have, you put in uh, your target price, your exit, and uh, then it, you, it, it basically populates this chart and it shows you how much uh, you would, ca if, you, if you decided to cash out like 35%, let's say, how much of, of your crypto you would cash out, how much you would still have remaining. And if you cashed out that much, how much uh, money you would have in US dollars. So it gives you guys a sense, an individual idea of um, you know what your targets are, where you wanna be, where you think realistic goals are for um, you know cashing out at that moment in time. I do have a link for this in the description of the video. Uh, and Carrie from App Labs also created an app. It's called the Cash Out Plan. You can find it for Android, you can find it for iPhone. And it is a free app. I do not get paid for this. Um, he did it on his own accord. So every now and then when I talk about targets and I talk about cashing out, I like to bring it up. And uh, for those of you guys who do want to donate to Carrie, this is his XRP address. So donate some XRP to him if you guys do end up using the app. A great little tool here though for cashing out because a lot of people have this question I never saw this video when it came out. Michael Branch uh, brought this to my attention. Has anyone else seen this? Apparently this guy works for the Department of Defense uh, as an IT guy, okay? Working at the Department of Defense. And he had some opinions on XRP, XLM, uh, and XDC specifically. I will link his video in the description of this video, guys. It is 24 minutes long, so I'm not gonna play the full thing, but I'm going to play a few clips here. He basically says XRP will go to three digits and beyond. And there are just some fundamental reasons for that. So the first skeptic point that, and arguably the most important skeptic point, because it's the one that usually makes the most sense to most people, is reflection uh, of current price, right? So for example, um, I got into a, a debate with someone in a Facebook group and you know, he went on my post where I had stated that I could easily see XRP going to a four or five digit number, maybe even beyond um, once everything's implemented. And uh, I had given explanations uh, regarding why. And the person had stated to me, and this was the rebuttal. He stated, well, if you look at the way that XRP and the XRP ledger are currently facilitating their utility goals, in the way that they're bridging value around now, then you would know that they don't need XRP essentially to facilitate these goals, nor does it have to be at a high price point because they have other technologies being Ripple. Um, and the current price of the coin is at 60 something cents. And so this means that they can actualize all of their utility goals with the coin being at a low price point and they don't even have to use the coin to move the value around. Okay. Now, <laughs> I <laughs> he's going to get into why that is ridiculous. I should note that this was posted uh, back in February. Okay. So at that time, XRP was uh, trading in and around 80 cents, give or take. Of course, we were coming off those highs, those inter-year highs from 2021 of about $2, roughly $2 per coin. At that point, it was down in the 80s. He talks about market fatigue in this interview too, but I did think it was important to kind of revisit this at a time when, I mean, we're all assuming the market has hopefully seen its bottom and now we're on the upswing. I think moves up to $5 trillion a day, right? This is $20 a coin off of doing sound research, okay? Listen, all right, <clears throat> the SWIFT system, I think moves up to $5 trillion a day, right? This is SWIFT, right? Pre ISO 222 implementation, pre HVPS and DTGS implementation, this is just what it does on a regular basis, right? Now, if you look at Ripple's technology uh, inner on-demand liquidity, what it's designed to do and the fact that it's directly attached to the XRP token, the fact that these institutions are looking to facilitate faster payments. If you look at the fact that Ripple is the only company that has the patent to ODL, if you look at the fact that Ripple is essentially one of the only companies that can facilitate the speed needed to actualize these goals for these major institutions, 
um, then you would understand that if we look at SWIFT's current state, moving $5 trillion a day on a broken, archaic system that has a 6% failure rate, don't take my word for this, all right? This is not official financial advice, and you shouldn't buy any assets based solely off of what I'm saying. This is my perspective. Pair it with yours, do your own due diligence and research, and then make informed purchases and decisions in the market. But with that disclaimer out of the way, if you, the, the real reason, and, and I'm touching on the negative attributes of SWIFT, because this is the whole reason that they had to adopt a global de facto messaging standard with digital assets attached to it, because it can't do its job effectively anymore. Now, am I going to get into the debate about whether or not I think Ripple and these other payment network companies actually replace Swift? No, I'm not because I don't know if that's going to happen. But what I do know is going to happen is that these companies will be working alongside Swift for the moment, right? We know this, okay? They've already stated they're adopting it, all right? Now, let's go back to the point of the $5 trillion a day on average that Swift is facilitating through its system with a 6% failure rate, okay? which is the leading reason that I think they, they moved to adopt ISO because of our liquidity crisis and because the system can't function uh, effectively in its current state, right? With that being said, what else you have to look at and realize is that perhaps, perhaps the $5 trillion a day that SWIFT is moving is due to limitations, okay? No one's considering that, right? Even if, let's say XRP captured uh, 50% of, of the market, right? Because you hear a lot of people say, well, you know, if it captures 10% alone, it's going to $500 a coin or more. Listen, all right, with Ripple holding the, the on-demand liquidity technology, there's no way that, that it's only going to facilitate 10% of that $5 trillion a day, right? We, we'd be kidding ourselves. OK, um, I, I usually try to stay conservative, but let's get real with, with one another. That's not what's going to happen. All right. The, uh, Ripple and its ODL technology are going to take up a, a nice size uh, portion of that market. OK, and then XLM and, and XDC will also have a share of that market as well for different functions. Right. Um, so what, what I could see happening here is that once ISO 222 is rolled out and these digital assets improve the system, SWIFT and, and these systems combined will have the freedom to move even more money, okay? That 6% failure rate that's happening constantly because it's an archaic, old, beat-up, broken system will, will suddenly stop, and then it would perhaps and potentially open up new abilities for the system to move even more than $5 trillion a day while fixing the liquidity crisis, okay? So, yes, in its current state, XRP is not responsible for facilitating all of the value on the XRP ledger. We know that. Yes, in its current state, the token itself is only worth cents on the dollar. Yes, the XRP ledger itself can move around value in tokenized forms in other methods outside of ODL. But I am telling you this right now, there is no way that these institutions are going to use ISO 222, implement the high value payment system, which goes live in the Eurozone in 2023. If you want links, I can post them um, straight from SWIFT alongside the real time growth settlement system and function at a low price once the utility and the value is flowing and being used. OK, right now, we are not seeing that type of value from a liquidity standpoint being flowed through the ledger to facilitate payments for major institutions. It hasn't happened yet. And so this is the big thing, the big takeaway here. It hasn't happened yet. There is a reason why we're so excited about ISO 20022 and that whole thing of, well, are the coins ISO 20022 compliant? And, you know, there's a faction of people that says it doesn't matter if they're compliant or not, you know, because it's not what you think it is. It doesn't matter. Basically, the system, the messaging system platform, as per T's crypto spot here, 
is needs to be revamped and is being revamped for a reason. This is what he is stating. I'm just going to bring this up because this kind of hits his point home here. March 20th, 2023 will be definitive. ISO 2022, the start of migration. This is coming uh, from coming out of Swift, uh, posted by Anders here on Twitter. At the same time, it is clear from our community feedback that there is strong momentum across the industry to implement and gain value from ISO 2022 rich data. Uh, so the revised start date, March 2023, will be definitive. Swift needed a better mousetrap. And so working alongside companies like Ripple, uh, he also mentions XLM and XDC in this uh, video too. Uh, and again, I will link this in the description if you guys want to watch the full thing. The point I want to just hit home here and the, the fact that, I mean, I completely agree with this guy. It's not happening right now. And the value has to be higher at some point when it does become implemented. And to think, I didn't even think of this, but to think that $5 trillion that Swift moves daily could be limited could be a limitation because they do not have an ODL mechanism is an interesting thought. Enter Ripple, enter ISO 2022, that messaging standard, enter DLT technology and the XRP token, and that number could explode, especially now during a liquidity crisis. Again, this was filmed in, uh, in February. Uh, and so, you know, the situation has gotten a lot worse since then. And so a three digit XRP, possibly even higher, definitely not off the table and XRP for sake of argument, could unleash even more power, could facilitate and will facilitate more than $5 trillion. And the fact that Swift is limited with that 6% error rate at 5 trillion could in fact be the reason why there is an ISO 2022 standard and the reason why they are working alongside companies like Ripple. Not to mention we're seeing huge partnerships like this, guys, coming from Boncrypt XRP. Let me remind you, XRP cannot be dirt cheap as Joel Katz once said. Do the math here, Visa would not add a 46 cent asset with a lawsuit over their heads. Let that sink in. So this is breaking news from a couple of days ago. Visa trillion dollar company to launch Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP wallets. Just going to hit the highlights here, guys. Visa moves forward with its crypto agenda by filing two diversified crypto related trademark applications. Visa has partnered with over 60 crypto firms, including wallet service providers and crypto exchanges to enable crypto payments for over 80 million merchants worldwide. And they are uh, integrating Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP wallets. Also, let's not forget Visa and the Earthport connection. Earthport is Ripple enabled and Visa purchased Earthport a few years ago, outbidding MasterCard on that deal. I believe that was finally inked in 2019. So we're seeing huge advancements like this. And another quick throwback here from Jamil Kays. I wanted to bring this up to XRP throwbacks. Now that settlement is getting closer. And if you guys didn't catch the video I did this morning, uh, just talking a little bit about the lawsuit, the settlement and how the quantity of amicus briefs being filed is likely a clue as to where the judge's head is at. I will link that video up here in the top right hand corner. Wanted to play you guys this, though, a clip from uh, the Thinking Crypto podcast. This is Adam Trademan, CEO of SBI Ripple Asia. Listen to what he has to say about XRP vis-a-vis -vis other cryptocurrencies. This was from, uh, I believe it was from June of 2020. So like, hey, you know, what's the real benefit of crypto? What's the real use case? Sure. And if you look at Bitcoin or Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, whatnot, I would love to say, man, hey, uh, you know, in Japan, everybody uses it at Starbucks, right, to buy their coffee. Not true. Okay. Now, truth, Tony, is people do use it more in Japan to buy stuff than anywhere else. Maybe, right? right? However, come on. If you look at the global zoom out, right? Speculative value. Yeah. yeah. It's an investment. It's like buying gold. Okay. It's just the reality of the situation. But for XRP and for Ripple technology, I would say maybe it's because of my role as the CEO of SVI Ripple Asia, but the Actual use cases, like for remittance, I get daily reports at 9 a.m. JST every morning on all of the transfers that are being sent using Ripple Tech, okay, mm. from Japan, South Korea, and other places, you know, overseas. There's a lot going on, man. That's a real use case that is way beyond just speculation. And that makes me happy. It makes me excited because that's a, that's a real thing where the technology is being used for something other than, you know, the equivalent of buying gold or silver or stocks or equities and gambling, you know, you know, sort of like on, on, on investment, right? And I think for a, for a technology to really become successful, you know, it's going to have to have a, a use case beyond just pure speculation. By the way, gold has a use case beyond pure speculation. It's called sure. a ring. <laughs> right, right. It actually has that, right? Most people don't realize. But you know, Bitcoin doesn't have that yet. We worked so hard to make it, you know, something where you could use as a payment method. But you know, for a variety of reasons, people love their credit cards, even me. 
<laughs> to yeah. get my up and points and stuff like that. Uh, but with Ripple Tech, you know, you're seeing real use cases beyond just speculation. And that- with Ripple Tech, you're seeing real applications beyond speculation, and that is happening at a low level today, guys. This is why we're not seeing the price as high as it could be, but three digits and beyond, definitely not off the table. March 2023, the ISO 20022 implementation, a liquidity crisis looming, all these things are going to play into this. All these things are factoring in to what XRP's price is going to be in the future. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.